Um, so what do you have to have in patient notification? Um, the first thing is what happened. So you want to have a brief description of what happened, the date of the breach, and the date that the breach was discovered. Um, this will help the patient, and we always say, you know, you want to release the information that you would want to know if your information was compromised, so that you can try to mitigate yourself as much as you as you want, uh, or as you can. So really, what you want to, you know, and you want to be careful. You want to keep the description fairly brief, especially if you've got um, law enforcement involved. They may not want you to release too much information because an investigation may be going on at that time. But really, you want to give a brief description, maybe what information has gone out when it happened. Um, then we want to talk about what PHI was released. Um, you know, was it x-rays, was it, you know, information like what Dan was talking about with the book going out with procedures in it? Um, what steps uh, patients should, uh, to, should take to protect themselves? Um, this could be, you know, this might be something you take on yourself that you decide a lot of companies have started doing this. We've seen this with some of the larger breaches that they started offering credit monitoring um, you know, that's a decision that you can make. Um, it's a nice way to show your patients that you, that you care and that you're um, really looking out for their information. So that might be something that you want to incorporate in part of that uh, notification plan. Um, you want to talk a little bit about what you're actually doing to, uh, to mitigate this, how you're investigating it. Um, again, be careful. Don't release too much information if law enforcement asks you not to. And you definitely have to have contact information for, for yourself as the covered entity. Um, this may be that you decide to hire an outside service to field phone calls for you um, rather than calling your office and, cl and clogging that up. But uh, you should have a way for them to contact you. Um, that could be via email, could be through uh, like a form for them to submit to you. Again, if you do it that way, make sure that that information is in excuse me, is encrypted at all times because um, you, you never know what kind of information people will put in that email, so you want to give them as, as strong a portal as possible to protect that information. Um, notification exceptions, as we talked about, law enforcement officials, they may ask you not to uh, release in a, a lot of information, especially when it comes to some of these electronic hacks we've been seeing. Um, they, you know, FBI's been playing their, their cards pretty close to their chest with what's going on with the ransomware right now. Um, the best we've seen is that they're saying they, they strongly advise that uh, practices, companies, do not pay the fines for ransomware. Um, but they haven't really released any, like, who they're investigating, what's going on. So they try, I think they're really trying to keep that, um, as, you know, keep that under wraps. So you need to be careful and make sure that, yes, you are uh, honoring what the uh, law enforcement is doing so that you don't impede an investigation of what's happened.